In this video, we're going to learn why we shouldn't use void as the return type for our main function in C. So here we have a typical main function in C with int as the return type. And here, we're going to return the int value zero. This will actually become the exit status for our program if it's executed. So we'll save this, we'll compile our program, and then we'll run it. And while the program doesn't have any output, the program does have an exit status and the shell can actually access that exit status. So if we say echo dollar sign question mark, we can access the exit status of the last program that ran. And here we get zero. So if we change this to return one here and save it, and then we compile our program again and run it and then say echo dollar sign question mark, we now get one as the exit status of our program. If our program uses void as the return type of the main function, then we lose the ability to use return to return a specific exit status. We'll actually take this out because we don't return values from a void function. We'll save this and we'll try to compile our program. So we actually get a warning here advising us that we should be using the return type int instead. It's actually up to the C compilers to decide whether or not they want to support the void return type of the main function or not. So it's not strictly speaking against the C standard. It's not illegal within C, but C as a standard leaves it up to the compilers to make a decision as to whether to support this or not. Now in our case here, our compiler gives us a warning. Let's see what happens if we actually try to run the program. So we'll run the program here, and then we'll say echo dollar sign question mark. And we get back 16 here. But because we've used void for the return type of main instead of int, we can't actually change this exit status by returning a different int value. And that's a problem. As a best practice, we want to use int as the return type of main. So that way we can return different values depending on the exit status of our program. Was it successful? Was it unsuccessful? If there was an error, what type of error occurred? So for example, the diff command works like this. Here I've got three files. I've got f1.txt with abc in it, f2.txt with abc in it, and f3.txt with 123 in it. I can run diff to see if two files are different. So if I say diff f1.txt and f2.txt, I'll get back nothing. But if I say diff f1.txt and f3.txt, I get back this information describing a conflict in the files where there's a difference in the files. And it's explaining that on line one, the one file has ABC and the other file has one, two, three. It's telling me what's different about the files. Now diff actually has an exit status that's important. So let's run the first one again. We'll say diff f1.txt and f2.txt. Then here I'll say echo dollar sign question mark. And we get back zero. So if diff can't detect any differences between the files, it'll exit with the status zero. If there are differences between the files, like this, we'll say f1.txt and f3.txt here, then diff will return one. So the exit status here actually tells us some fairly important information. Now, programs on the shell are often used as part of shell scripts. Shell scripts are basically programs that run in the shell, and they're capable of doing things like executing programs. We might use shell scripts to automate certain tasks. We could also use shell scripts as part of the testing of our application. So for example, we could have our application run for some sample input. We could then analyze the output of our program using diff to see if it matches what we expect. And if it does, then we could output a success message. If it doesn't, we could output a failure message. So for example, here we have a shell script that automates the diff commands we've just run and the checking of the exit status as well. So here we run diff with f1.txt and f2.txt. And here in this if, we're looking at the exit status. And if it's equal to zero, we're gonna output f1, f2 match success. Otherwise, we're gonna output f1, f2 match fail. And then here, we run diff with f1.txt and f3.txt. And again, if the exit status 
is equal to zero, we're going to output F1, F3 match success. Otherwise, we're going to output F1, F3 match fail. If we run this script, we'll get back the expected result. F1, F2 match success and F1, F3 match fail. And we've used scripting to automate the process of running these programs and checking their exit status. So scripting that takes advantage of the exit status of a program is important for automated testing, but it's really just important for automation in general. Let's write a C program that uses different exit statuses and we'll write a script to use our program. So what we'll do is write a program that has int as a return type of main. And what we're going to do is have our program accept a single command line argument. And that command line argument should be an integer value. So for example, we could run the program like this, dot slash d10, or dot slash d5. What we'll do is check to see whether that number is even or not. If it's an even number, we're gonna have an exit status of zero. If it's not, we're gonna have an exit status of one. If the wrong number of command line arguments has been provided, we'll have an exit status of two to signal an error. So here we'll say, if argc doesn't equal two, we're going to return two to signal that an error has occurred. So argc will be two if both the executable and the argument are present. If we had an additional argument like this, then argc will be set to three. In that case, we would want to return two to signify that an error has occurred. Else, if this is not the case, we're gonna to check to see if the argument is even or not. We'll say int num is equal to atoi argv1. So to use this atoi function, that's gonna convert a string to an int value, we're going to have to include stdlib.h because that's the library where that function is defined. And we're gonna to pass to atoi the string of that command line argument. It's gonna take it and convert it to an int and we're gonna store that into num. Then we'll check to see if num is even or not. So if num modulus two is equal to zero, we're gonna return zero. Otherwise, we're going to return one. So modulus two is gonna return the remainder of dividing num by two. If that remainder is zero, that means we have an even number in num. If it's not, we have an odd number. And we're gonna return zero if the number is even and one if it's odd. And here we have a script that takes advantage of the exit statuses of our program here. So the script is gonna look at the numbers from one to 10 with this for loop here. It's gonna run our program with each one of those numbers. It's gonna check the exit status of the program. If it's zero, it's gonna output that the number is even. Otherwise, it's gonna output that the number is odd. And then to check our error handling, here we try to run the program using two arguments. And then we check to see if the exit status is two. And if it is, we output invalid arguments. So let's compile our program and then try running it with this script. So first we'll compile our program and then we'll try running the script. We'll say bash and then check.sh. And we get one is odd, two is even, three is odd, four is even, and so on. And we also get invalid arguments. And so here we're using the exit status of our program to help automate the evaluation of whether or not integers are even or odd. And this is obviously a bit of a simple example, but it does illustrate how the exit status of a program can be used to help automate tasks via a shell script. Now I should mention that even if the return type of our main function is void, it is possible to set an exit status. What we'll do is use the exit function. We'll say exit and five. The exit function is defined inside this stdlib.h library. It will actually cause our program to terminate 
and it will exit with this status here. So if we save this and then compile our program and run it, we'll see that our program has an exit status of five. But even though we can do this, we still want to use int as the return type of our main function. So that way we retain the ability to use the return statement to provide an exit status. And remember, there is no guarantee that every C compiler will support using a void return type with our main function. And as a result, if we use a void type, our code will become less portable, as it may not compile successfully on all compilers. Unfortunately, some textbooks and examples online use a void return type, but as a best practice, we should not use void and instead use int as our main function return type. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.